Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt. This is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching The Sopranos episodes 13 and 14. What'd you think of the last two episodes, which was technically season 6A? Great way to end it. Honestly, we talked about this afterwards. We're trying not to read like too many comments um, in case there's anything spoilery. Been okay right yeah, now, so yeah. thank you guys. But did not realize that that was the end of 6A when we watched it. We weren't really paying attention to like where the two episodes per reaction was gonna line up. So it just kind of worked out. Yeah, and every other season's had 13. So I actually thought that this was gonna be the finale. Right. But it didn't work out that way for 6A. That was the first half. And now there was a big gap, like a traditional season long gap. And now we have season 6B. Everything that we've seen from the comments said, you know, 6A is great, but it is on the slower side. 6B moves at like a rapid fire pace, but is like excellent masterpiece episode after excellent masterpiece episode for the whole nine episodes remaining. So that's high praise, but Sopranos is one of the few shows that you can give it high praise and it backs it up. Yeah, I'm so excited, but I'm also so sad at the same time. I don't want this to be over, so I have a lot of mixed emotions. Yeah, it's weird for sure. I remember in the beginning, it was like, man, we're never gonna get through 80 something episodes or something. And now there's only nine left. I'm like, dang, really? That was way too fast. Yeah. So I'm super excited. Also, there was one thing that uh, a lot of people commented that was like a real interesting idea that didn't hit me in the moment. Phil Leotardo coming out of the closet. Literally. But it just puts that whole scene in a, such a different perspective and moments with him after in a different perspective. It's like, holy crap. I just thought it was funny. Like I thought it was kind of stupid the reveal, but then I'm like, dang, that was actually super clever if that's what they were going for. Yeah, it could have just been a little tongue in cheek to that very violent situation. <laughs> right. But I guess we'll find out or maybe we won't, but just an interesting moment. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I'm sure there's gonna be tons more in these next nine episodes, so I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episodes. You want a coffee? I don't know. I... Such a great moment that was. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh no. Great, a kid with a gun. Okay. 2007? Yeah. Pretty aggressive. Yeah. Is this it? Carmella. What'd she say? Is this it? Yeah. Uh oh. It could be it. Meadow's home. Are you Anthony Soprano? Can I see a warrant? We have the right. <laughs> Will you tell them he's got a medical condition? This is his family doctor right here. Ask him. What'd that kid do with that gun? Clearly put very dangerous bullets in it. I think those dangerous bullets were already in it. Oh, you think? Yeah. What? Weapons charge. He seemed really surprised, though. Probably surprised that his gun was found. If you have hollow point bullets in anything, take them out today. <laughs> Good advice, actually. AJ, I asked for the brown suit from the dry cleaning bag. Damn, really stupid ass beard also. Is that all about humiliating dad? Do you think it's the same place that oh, Johnny uh, Sack is? Could be. Uh, well, they said Essex, right? Oh, nice. Just a squat. Claims he saw my client drop that weapon. But over two years ago. Yeah, that's pretty... Pretty weak. Yeah. Like for all the things Tony's done, that's what he's gonna go to prison for. Would I shit you? You're my favorite turd. <laughs> Don't listen to me. My cranky fuck lately. Lately? Yeah, right? Uh. Oh. Is there a picture of Johnny Sack on the wall like that? I can't tell how much time actually has passed. Yeah. Well, they said two years since. Since that event. Yeah. I'm here to enjoy my grandchildren, my home. That's what Tony said. 
enjoy your grandchildren. Drops a gat in a field somewhere. The fucking farmers, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's probably going down to some sheep or some shit. <laughs> Not a good joke. For far too you know what long, that says, Hector? Oh, dang. It's your mommy's name, Blanca. They're still together? I guess. <laughs> so much for Blanca getting AJ to, like, grow up a little bit. They let him out already? What she means is, in our neighborhood, people don't get out right away. In your neighborhood? Where's Christopher? I don't know. I thought he was here. Damn, AJ didn't even go up to say hi to his dad or anything? You had to have your cheap headline, huh? Can you really not be aware we've been building a Rico case? Yeah, so stupid. Then you blow this popcorn fart. <laughs> like, that was such a weak move to take Tony for that. Are you gonna relax? I mean, what if the broker is trying to contact me? Caravan from my house is on Tuesday and the gas is still off. Cool. Wow, so her house is done. Yeah. Essex County dropped the charges. I told you it was a piece of shit case. Santa Claus could have dropped that gun in the snow. <laughs> that lawyer must be so rich working for Tony. Hey, Chish. <sighs> this is a nice place. Dang, Bobby, those are some shorts. Hey, Come on. This is really cute. Yeah. No, I gotta admit it. Once you're up here, it's pretty great. That is beautiful. Dude, you're matching dress just like mommy. Oh. And she's so big. Uh, he has enough lawn maintenance at the new house and somebody let the gardener go. Oh. Oh. I'm joking. You know how grateful we are. Are you joking? Absolutely. Jeez. What a gun. Is this how you bag that deer? I wouldn't use a firearm like this on a deer. It's unsportsmanlike. He would destroy <laughs> the deer. I've been using a bow and arrow exclusively. Dang, that's awesome. Seriously, it levels the playing field. The AR-10, it's my birthday present to you. Whoa. Don't say shit to Carmella. <laughs> are you going to hide that? <laughs> also, how ironic with him just getting off of that charge. Right? Fresh gun charges and a fresh new gun. You've really changed. So I had to change. It's a compliment. Yeah, you were fine. I'm sure Carm would agree. I would. I mean, you did have a different outlook. I'm different how? Oh my god. How am I different? This is like a, I'm funny how? <laughs> oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> so let me tell you. This three-year-old child managed to fall into the pool. Nobody even noticed till finally they found him floating face down in the water. I can't get that story out of my mind. I don't know why. A depressing story. Yeah. Jeez, Carmela. Oh, happy birthday. I keep just assuming there's something wrong with him. <laughs> no, I knew it was happening right away. It was just like... That jacuzzi's bitchy. Who is that? That's Fran, the waitress. All right, look, we're really busy down here. Damn, AJ, you suck. Don't let us forget to wash the sheets, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Having a party? Jeroboam <laughs> Soprano. What's up? I don't like this. They're having a pool party. The After that story. The, yeah, the story. 80% of the time it ends up in the can like Johnny Shack or on the embalming table of Cogarelli's. No risk, no reward. Yeah, there really is only kind of two outcomes. Don't come to think of it, you never popped your cherry in that regard, right? No. Oh, he's never killed someone? Your old man was the fucking Terminator. And it come close. It shoots right in the butt. <laughs> That's right. Insulate myself from the stuff that could bring down a boss. Take care of Carmella, too. Yeah, we haven't even seen Christopher. In me and this person, there's divergent agendas. Sorry to hear it. It happens. I think he's gonna put Bobby in this spot. I'm honored just to be considered. Then we'll see what happens after that. Long term. Dang, Bobby. Soprano home movies. I have all the Super 8s from when we were kids transferred. Oh, no! Oh, God. It doesn't even sound like Carmella. No. Money from community trust and chance goes into the middle. Whoever lands on free parking gets the money. That's how I play, too. But a lot of people play it that way. They add a whole new level of excitement to the game. I don't agree with <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Parker Brothers. Just play the game. Now I'm afraid for their kid. They're all way too drunk. That's what I was kind of thinking, too. But they had <clears throat> someone there watching her, right? Yeah. How about every time I land on one of my properties, I get $100? How about that? How about that? <laughs> This is going to end up in a fight for sure. 
Can you tell me the difference between bribery and positive reinforcement? That looked like a bribe to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the fuck out. Oh, in front of the baby. If I could tape you, you tape recorded me and Bob fighting? Oh, I forgot about that. So did you guys look at her hair? Was it powder burns? She had a bob the next day. <laughs> Boardwalk eye on it. Yeah, you blue guys are there. This is gonna, this is way too tense. This is my home. No more talking like that. It's okay, Bob. Stay out of it. All right, you know. Wow. I apologize, won't happen again. Really? Under the boardwalk, with his schlong and change my house. Under the... Oh, fuck. Monopoly. Uh oh. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, Bobby won. Bobby! Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Bobby beat the shit out of him. Don't kill yourself! Oh! Oh, my shoulder is killing me. Jesus fucking Christ, Tony. <laughs> he did throw her off. He still has a house in his cheek. I'm really sorry. Bobby, just what? shut up. Let's all just go to bed. Bobby, you might die. Yeah, I think that's why he was trying to get in the car. I mean, Bobby's a big dude. He is head of the family. Do you think he's just gonna wake up tomorrow and forget about this? They should never play Monopoly. Kiss sleep. <laughs> in the middle of the bed. What are you doing, Tony? What the fuck are you doing? You beat me fair and square. That was an interesting comment. I mean, also, Bobby got the first sucker punch in. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. I mean, he didn't start it. I mean, I guess the comment started it, but... That was just joking around with a brother and a sister. You were right. You told me to ease up on the drinking. You should have insisted. So now it's my fault. <laughs> Go wash your face so we can leave. Change. Oof. So bad. We're family. Jesus, these things happen. No. We had a little too much to drink, but no harm done. Look at his face. It's gonna like sink his boat or something. I've seen that sitting in the chair thing. People sit in chairs. What are you thinking, Tony? How old is Bobby? 42, 43? You think those four years don't make a difference? <laughs> and my body has suffered a trauma that it will probably never fully recover from. Having like a midlife crisis because he got beat up. Hey, T, it's me. Just oh. want to wish you a belated happy birthday. Oh, you're in trouble, Christopher. Four little ducks went out one day. Singing about ducks, huh? It all started with ducks. I don't want to take nothing away from you, but sucker punch is a sucker punch. So then it wasn't fair and square. Yeah, in the middle of the night, you said fair and square. Well, forget about it. I am. Why is that beer so tiny? <laughs> It's like two sips. Where are you two going? Play some golf with some people. Canada? Oh. Um. Yeah, is he gonna go kill Bobby? <laughs> I don't want Nika going in the lake without my knowing. Especially after that story. Take her to the house. Put her to bed now. <laughs> it's like the middle of the afternoon. For now? Didn't they have a conversation yesterday about how, like, the separation starts when the kid can start, like, talking and coming up with different opinions or whatever. You're right. Tony, for example. Oh, listen, he's got that temper too. Yeah, how long have they been gone for? There is no excuse for the way Bobby blindsided him. Tony is not a vindictive man. Oh, uh, I feel no. like we're about to cut to Bobby being dead. What did I say? Everything you say, Janice, has an undertone to yeah. it. She is concerned. Okay. They are at the meeting. We sell four pills to you for $10 US. Whoa. Like uh, old? Change that date, nobody knows. Oh, expired pills? To have him gone from her life. That's well, tough talk, Bonami. Are you asking? You paid to some drug addict? No, somebody reliable. Is he gonna make Bobby do it? Oh, pop Bobby's cherry. He'll take care of this, right? Sure. No bow and arrows now. 
Oh, man. Nice, huh? Bobby, you really fucked yourself. You literally were like in the best situation possible and you just sucker punched Tony. Bobby! Janice was worried. Oh, for sure. Thank God you're still alive. You let them win. Smart. No. I mean, kinda. <laughs> Agreeing to that. I mean, they were saying like, Tony gets away with murder because he's the boss and stuff. But Bobby got away with that fight because he's married to Janice. If anyone else would have done that, they would already be dead. When are you coming back? I'm not sure. A couple days. Stop fucking nagging me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Gotta go murder someone. Isn't his car wrecked? I think he just, like, reversed into a tree. I don't think it's any serious damage or anything. Man, this is... Such crazy revenge Tony got by forcing him to kill someone. Oh, he did it. Jeez. Why'd you get so close, Bobby? Oh. DNA, fingerprints. I what think he's wearing gloves. Was he? Yeah. You said they dropped it. Essex County did, but now looks like the feds took it over. Ah. Uh, they had what they needed. We'd be having this conversation through glass. Silver lining? I mean, everyone knows they're building a case. Like... Yeah. Fresh from a murder. Damn, that was crazy. Oh, oh my God. Jeez. This is like most graphic thing we've seen. Oh, is this the movie? Cleaver? Oh. I was just about to say, this guy looks like a Baldwin or something. I was thinking that too. Whoa. <laughs> Fuck Ben Kings. Danny Baldwin took him to fucking acting school. Oh, it was a Baldwin. Two extra shoot days at a minimum. I'd have to get more money from Tony. Oh, Tony did give him money? Guess so. Finishing the ADRF. What's that again? Sound dubbing. Just call his dispatcher. <laughs> he don't give two shits about production. It's a little boring, I gotta say. I mean, that was surprising to me. I'm surprised the movie's this far along. Yeah. To Sacrimony, how are you today? Did he have you to tell me? Yeah, has he always been sick? I remember Polly getting sick. Based on the latest pictures, the cancer has continued to metastasize. Cancer? Both kidneys and the brain. Why do I not remember Johnny Sack having cancer? It's literally everywhere. Goddamn chemo. What was all that? Those were our options at the time. And now, what are our options? Looking at stage four small cell carcinoma of the lungs. There's no stage five. That's correct. Okay. How long? Three months. Jeez. Give or take. Cancer sucks. I'm very, very sick. Oh my God. Don't cry. You don't have to make it any harder than it is, all right? No physical contact, please. Come on, man. You see me again tomorrow, we have more time, huh? There's been so much cancer in this show. Mm-hmm. Even Tony had a cancer scare. Gonna say Can something about the one smoking? One. No. no, he wants one. No point anymore. Surprised you can smoke with an oxygen tank. Taking a date to the screening? I can meet a normal guy, maybe. Oh. Cool. I assume they broke up. That's why she's home. I just want to hang with celebs. Why? You think you're going to get to sleep with Paris Hilton? What? No. <laughs> Damn, Blanca. Meow. You two have a fight? I don't know. He somehow looks younger than last season. Yeah. Let me spare us the awkwardness. I killed my wife. Whoa. Shot her four times. Twice in the head. I killed her aunt, too. Jeez, man. And the mailman. At that point, I had to fully commit. Damn, he just went on a killing spree. Two rounds of paraplatin, dust attacks all in one. Any cancer inside you slowed to a crawl. We tell a patient three months, he lives a year. Who looks like a hero? Oh, wow. I'll see you around, John. You take it easy. One to three years left, possibly? That's significantly different than yeah, three months. Yeah, I mean, looking like a hero. I uh, guess. You'd be helping us a lot if you, uh, you let us know. I think there's a word for that. Rat. My daughter takes pre-med classes in New York. She uses the tunnels. Ooh. There's something to keep in mind. 
Oh, laying it on thick. That's the last time I'm going down for the paper. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's too dangerous. Has been for years. <laughs> Carmela's just numb. I have your attention, please. I have your attention. Man, it's all the gangsters in one place. Much like a child, a film has many parents. That is to say, many individuals. Looks good. Yeah. Without him, this whole thing would be impossible. Where is he? Anthony Soprano, everybody. <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, I thought it was going to be me. All the other investors, too. Plus my wife, Kelly, and our new baby. I love you. Ooh, baby's born? Yeah, I mean, I think we're around a year. Yeah. You don't know what? He's a fucking rat. What a basement. <laughs> the outfit, too. Son of a... <laughs> That's you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. You've never been to a movie? But the truth is, he ain't good enough. I mean, he's a good kid. What you need is a man. Tell him to put it in the trunk. <laughs> Polly. What, what was that for? Is that part of his indiscretions? Tony's? Whatever else happened, you made a movie, Christopher. Nobody can take that away. Oh, they're here. Brian Raleigh, U.S. Marshal Service. In terms of your bail, confine you to your home, sir. Really? Getting arrested here? Leave alone, yeah. That was Florida. Hot and sticky, like my balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, what on the street is Jerry's a favorite to take home? He's my protege. He's got a ticket on the Jersey Turnpike. Broken windshield wipe. I said he should talk to you. <laughs> Jerry, how are you? Manny. Is there a uh, tension? I want to take care of all of this now. I could hang on for years. <laughs> I mean, it is better to get this taken care of in the next couple of months. I mean, OJ's no less of a running back, right? Okay, I guess that's true. <laughs> How will I be remembered? A wonderful husband? On the street, though, I mean. Well, from what I know, you were well-liked, John. The only negative. What's the negativity? People felt you changed. Became a little trigger happy, maybe. It's a thankless job. Nice, you got merch. Does it change color? Oh, should have changed colors with the heat. Add more blood to the cleaver. It's a movie. It's fictional. It's a revenge fantasy, Tony, which ends with the boss's head split open by a meat cleaver. Yeah, it's not a great look by Christopher. I wonder if he's gonna want to change the ending of the movie. Have the boss win. That bulb was pretty good, huh? Uh-oh. He's a mean fuck. I'll give him that. <laughs> Still knows exactly what he's trying to do. He was not biting. What if instead of a pair of scissors, it's a meat cleaver instead? <gasps> a couple years later, you got a movie. Shooter McGavin. <laughs> I was like, I know him from somewhere. Is that an FBI guy? Your tax dollars are worth. Does he follow you around all the time? They drop in and out. Who is he, this guy, though? You came into that meeting, you were so fucked up you could barely talk. And that woman friend was even worse. New sponsor? Steer clear of old habits, same people. Must be hard though. What happened with that girl, the realtor? The guy wasn't making him money no more. And that was Carmine Lupatazzi. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> so now he's just telling stories. John, what the hell are you doing? Calm down, all right? Calm down, I don't fucking believe you. I don't think it's gonna speed up the process. What about all these six year olds with leukemia? What's that from? All their negative thinking? I mean, he's essentially terminally ill. I feel like he could smoke if he wants. It's fucking waiter on sabbatical. Is that the night you. What just happened? Let's go! What the hell? Who did that? No idea. I mean, they're all, I assume, vying for power now that Phil Leotardo is stepping down. Right. But they probably wouldn't be kind after each other, right? I think they are. Get your hands around this thing. You know you got the support. I'm flattered. But boss, I don't think so. Especially now that Doc has cemented his position. Yeah, I was going to say it was Doc, it was, not little Carmine. Yeah. I don't want to be the wealthiest widow on Long Island. I want you to quit. Yeah, this is a dangerous job. That dream with my father, the empty box, it's about being boss. It's about being happy. Hey, wow. yeah, little Carmine has his uh, priorities in order. 
You're my cousin, and I love you, Carmela, but I don't like what you're inferring here. Now that the house is being sold, uh, Carmela's back on the Adriana train. I'm dying, aren't I? I gotta concur with Rosen. Damn, is that worse to get like a little glimmer of hope? I mean, he had a couple days of oh. thinking he had more time. Yeah. He probably thinks I put it in there to embarrass. Why did you put it in there? Ooh. I don't know. Who knows where they fucking come from? Isaac Newton invented gravity because some asshole hit him with an apple. <laughs> now I'm supposed to take responsibility for some shit that's going to get me in trouble? Fuck that, man. Uh-oh. Are you going to get hit in the head? This award, what's that? For writing themes of socially redeeming. Ah! Yep. Maybe you talk to your agent like that, but don't ever get fucking snippy on me again. After the shot was fired. That shot was nuts. Yeah, slow motion, just blood on the face. So this is how he's gonna tell him. William Holden falls in love with Crawford's girlfriend, played by Judy Holliday. What happened to your head? What? Yeah. Oh, uh, cabinet. Tony did not take that. No. If anything, that just confirms that it was Christopher's idea to begin with. Yeah. I mean, he did his best, but that was not convincing. You got something that belongs to me. If you want to get out of here alive, you better give it back. Is this the movie that he was talking about? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Shut up! You ain't gonna be telling nobody nothing pretty soon. Huh. <laughs> it is an angry person. And all I did for this fucking kid, and he fucking hates me so much. Wants to see me dead. I don't know about that far, but... There is a lot there. Is it possible that on some level you're reading into all this? I mean, everybody sees it. They're nice and clean like you like them. You're right here by the bed. This is happening so fast. Yeah. Look at me, baby. <laughs> is that it? You want a cigarette, baby? John? How's John? That's why I'm here, Tony. John passed away late this morning. Dang. Ride the painted pony, let the spinner wheel glide. Huh? Well, I guess that answered our Polly question. What was our question? If he was sick still? Oh. They changed it at Ellis Island to Leotardo. What did they do that for? Because they're stupid, that's why. <laughs> that cocksucking piece of shit, Tony Soprano's cousin. I can't even say his name. Leotardo. That's my fucking legacy. No more of this. What's going on? Uh-oh. A baptism's never good. So much tension. All right. That was episodes 13 and 14 of The Sopranos. What'd you think? Wow. <laughs> what a start to 6B. Yeah. I mean, both episodes have felt really, really dark. I feel like there's just so much death in like this kind of like dark cloud looming over everything. Yeah. Obviously we had the story of the child that drowned and that was just like kind of weighing pretty heavily that we like even just felt like something bad is gonna happen. It set the tone that something bad was going to happen and it was very heavy on highlighting, you know, Bobby and Janice's daughter, as well as Hector, I think is the name of AJ or Blanca's son. Yeah. And then like a pool party, which is the whole theme of that tragic story. So it was trying to set you up for something dark and that whole episode was dark. Yeah. So we definitely got a closer look at Bobby and Tony's relationship. We clearly had a bit of a time jump, maybe around a year. -ish. Something like that, yeah. And it's just really interesting to see because, you know, Janice has always been pushing for Bobby. Tony's, you know, treated him like more for being his brother-in-law, but he hasn't like given him like a ton. I was going to say that the start of that episode or the majority of that episode, that was like the best that Bobby and Tony have been to each other. Yes, I agree. It felt like a turning point that this opportunity for Bobby was really 
coming. Yeah. He got like that new account and Tony kind of left it open-ended to say like, okay, let's see where we go from here. As in potentially taking over kind of that role that Christopher almost had. Yes, which the whole dynamic with Christopher and Tony is like a whole other story. But we know that things are not good between the two of them. So that was a really important conversation. But the whole Monopoly night... <laughs> was just an absolute nightmare. I mean, you put hotheads in a room and then add alcohol and then add Monopoly, like you're just asking for something to go wrong. Yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. Obviously they were just getting like more and more intoxicated as the night was going on. Then Monopoly just gets more competitive, but I guess maybe Bobby just hasn't really seen the real banter between Tony and Janice unless he has seen it and he generally is sober. So he just knows, you know, let it go because it's Tony. It was a very strange moment for Bobby because they were still in a joking mood, mm -hmm. Tony and Janice, and there wasn't anything that happened prior that would like upset Bobby. If anything, like that was the nicest Tony has ever been to Bobby and then essentially gave him a promotion and then like laid the groundwork or an even bigger promotion. So it did seem like it kind of came out of nowhere. I think that's why everyone was so shocked that he just kind of sucker punched Tony and then proceeded to kick his ass. Yeah, I think, you know, Carmella is more used to it with things with Tony and Janice. Bobby, it doesn't seem like he is. And yeah, like you said, it was kind of on the funny side of things. You know, we're seeing kind of them have a banter that didn't actually get heated, which is a rarity, I think, between the two of them. Yeah, so that's what's crazy about it, is like it was surprisingly one of the happier, calmer moments with everyone there. And that's like coming off fresh of giving them that, you know, house, the Johnny Sachs house. So it's like, if anything, Tony was being extremely nice and generous to Bobby and Janice. Janice obviously has her little digs constantly and stuff. Yeah, the gardener. Um, yeah, the gardener. But I mean, that really did kind of come out of nowhere, in my opinion. But the ramifications of that fight, what Tony made Bobby do was insane. And I mean, I think that's just so Tony yeah. that like he will get some extreme revenge or he will take things so personally. I mean, he spent so long trying to justify that, oh, you know, Bobby is four years younger than me. And if I wouldn't have been shot in the gut, and if there the wasn't, rug. yeah, if there wasn't a rug, like I totally would have kicked his ass. It's like, no, dude, you got beat fair and square, which you admitted to in your like drunken state at 4 a.m. Yeah. But once he kind of sat in that chair and came to his senses, he was like, how do I get back at Bobby? And when that opportunity came to kill someone and the whole conversation that Bobby had never killed someone, like Bobby could have potentially gone his whole life never killing anyone if he never would have punched Tony in the face. Yep. So that was such a disturbing moment for Bobby to do that. And it was extremely personal to tie that in with him coming back home straight to like a family event with his like daughter running into his arms when that whole situation was about like taking kids away from their mom or something. Uh, I mean, Sopranos just knows how to like lay it on thick. Yeah. So that was a lot. Yeah, I completely agree. So Bobby knows that he's kind of screwed at this point. Tony is absolutely going to hold this over him. He has the upper hand and Bobby is just going to have to do probably more. Yeah, or he'll never be trusted to do anything ever again. Lose probably a ton of money, like get put all the way at the bottom. So it's either going to be shit jobs or no jobs, but either way, it's not really good. No. And I mean, the first thing that Janice is saying is like, what are you doing? Like, he's the head of the family. I mean, Janice knew what was up right away. And for the tumultuous relationship that Janice and Tony have, like everyone is aware of who's in charge. What lines do you not cross? So Bobby screwed up. <laughs> yeah, Bobby screwed up big time. So, I mean, that was the most dark, disturbing element to start this season 6A or mm -hmm. season 6B, I mean. But again, like we go through character after character just seeing low points. AJ is struggling in this relationship with Blanca, whereas just one episode ago, it was this situation where it was like, 
wow, I've never seen AJ act more mature and grown up. And now like he even physically looks younger. I think Blanca wants more of a man, maybe someone with more responsibility or drive or something. Yeah. There was a, a moment there, something where there was someone saying like, oh, I think it was maybe during the movie Cleaver, where they're like, oh, I, you want to be with a man or something. And it cut to Blanca like looking at AJ, I think. So AJ is struggling in that relationship. Meadow, whatever the hell happened between her and, and Finn. Yeah, that went south. That went south. So Meadow's now back home. And single. And then we have Carmela with like the spec house. It seems like it's kind of finally done. So now she's not distracted. So she's bringing up Adriana and stuff. It's just not good. I mean, primarily in the next episode, the tragedy is with Johnny Sack dying and with Phil Leotardo realizing his age and like stepping down and the chaos that that's causing. And then the absolute fracture of Tony and Christopher. I mean, we barely saw Christopher at all in the start of this season, season 6B. And I mean, that was a pretty rough moment with Tony and Dr. Melfi where he's like, the guy hates me. He just wants to see me dead. Like, I thought I was a father figure. I mean, they've obviously had their moments, but I'm sure in Tony's mind that he thought he was going to leave like a lasting impression with Christopher, not be someone that he just totally resents. And, I, and there was a lot of talk about like legacy. Johnny Sack brought it up. Like, how am I going to be remembered? Phil Leotardo, I think, was talking about like, how's the Leotardo name going to be remembered? Yeah. And now Tony, like, how am I going to be remembered by Christopher? So it's like everyone is battling this midlife for extra life crisis that's exactly how i feel like in terms of like the darkness and it feeling like the end like it's the end of the show but it also feels like so many people are like getting into that point in their lives especially in this like lifestyle of just being like what is there like what am i gonna leave but also just like what are people gonna think of me all of these things and it's crazy like how many people this is going across. Yeah, I mean, it's affecting almost everyone. I mean, you look at this world and it's like, what do you get? You either die or end up in prison. That's pretty much it. You never really get to enjoy the spoils of your work, like retire on a lake house somewhere because someone's gonna make you murder someone for the first time. Yeah. So there's no real reward. You're constantly living in fear of either being killed or sent to jail. And you had this moment with little Carmine, who's just like, I don't want this. This is not my life. Uh, I want nothing to do with this. Yeah. And he might be the most sane person on this show because he probably does have a legitimate opportunity to take over the New York family, which is massive. Huge. And he would rather just make movies and pornos and enjoy his life in Miami or something because he's like, this is fucking brutal, the life that you guys are in. Yeah, no, I agree. I think he's kind of the smartest of the bunch, but it's not even really about being smart, just about him actually having an opportunity. Obviously, he's still in it. That's very um, true. But he has the opportunity to not take that position. That's a very good point. Uh, I mean, we go back to that one guy who won millions of dollars and wanted to retire and ended up taking his own life because he couldn't leave this world. Right. So little Carmine's like, I'm not getting in. Like if you guys are not pulling me in and you're okay with me being on the sidelines, I'm gonna stay right here. Yeah, and you know, he's still involved. He still know what's going on. And Tony's like looking at him like, this should be you, but yeah. he's making that decision for himself, which not a lot of people get the ability to do in this world. No, not at all. We also have cancer being such a heavy theme throughout Sopranos. I'm curious if David Chase or anyone else has had, you know, loved ones lost to cancer or something, because I mean, we've had a substantial amount of characters either have cancer or die by cancer. And to continue with this dark, bleak world, you have Johnny Sack dying in his bed and I don't think anyone came to visit him at any point. No. I mean, other than his family, but like the fact that, you know, he was relatively well respected and a boss of the New York family. And yeah, he did confess, but he never named anyone other than himself. But that was enough for him to just die alone without anyone visiting him. So it's like, I mean, you have Phil Leotardo going to the hospital and he's got like six guys there 
when Tony was in the hospital, everyone was there. Johnny Sack just has a couple of last breaths. We don't even see his death on camera. It's just an afterthought. Yeah. So for such a, an important character to just kind of be like, hey, he died yesterday. And then they take a shot and go, eh, what can you do? And that's it. It's like, shit, this, this sucks. Yeah. I mean, it definitely feels very intentional the way that they played that out. And we got to see it as an audience, just how quickly he was deteriorating and, you know, the small things like getting to tell people in prison about Carmine and yeah. uh, just kind of a little bit about the life, you know, smoking a little bit, meaning this murderous doctor <laughs> um, and his family, that was it. And it happened so quickly. Neither of us can even recall if we knew. Yeah, I, I was so shocked. I'm like, is that just something we totally forgot? Like, was there an episode where he went to the doctors and was diagnosed with cancer? I guess I do remember him being in the hospital, or I maybe I'm con that. maybe I'm confusing that with Junior. I remember they used to meet in the hospital, I think, but I think that was Tony and Junior. Yeah, now. yeah. I don't know. Like, did that just come out of nowhere, or did yeah. we just totally forget? I, I think we're just blinded by the storyline of Polly having cancer. Mm -hmm. That that's the only one I can think of currently. Yeah. But yeah, he just just gone. Just a major character just gone. It's just crazy that this show focuses so much on family and the destruction of like family that I mean we have moments where people get taken to prison or the FBI comes but it's like that is not their biggest fear like your biggest fear is maybe dying at dinner getting shot which that was an insane sequence that was nuts watching Sill's face as he's talking and then he all of a sudden he's just covered in blood I honestly thought that something happened with like the episode. I thought something happened to the audio. Yeah. Yeah, the audio like cuts out and then I was like, what the heck? And then you just see the blood spatter and I'm like, oh my God, like what's happening? Yeah, did did Syl get shot or something? Yeah. Or uh, that girl, or a girl that was next to him. Yeah. I was like, why would she get shot? <laughs> that was such an intense sequence. And I think it just goes into just how quickly these guys' lives can just change. Either like you literally are at a party after a movie and then all of a sudden you're arrested or you're having lunch with someone or dinner and then all of a sudden you have seven shots and you're gone. Yeah. It is crazy and I, I think this is, well I guess everything we've watched actually are, are like when I'm thinking of like Goodfellas or any other type of stuff, it really does glorify to a certain extent but then crashes hard. I feel like Sopranos has been crashing for like two seasons. Yeah, they hit you hard with like, don't glorify this lifestyle. And it's just been downhill for these characters since then. Yeah. And you know, it's issue after issue after issue, but just emotionally it's draining. Oh yeah. So, I mean, rest in peace to Johnny Sack. That yeah. was very unexpected. And I feel like this whole New York scene, the competition, for the new boss position is just getting started. And we only have seven episodes left. So, yeah. I mean, these first two episodes, I feel were just like insane. With only seven episodes left, if every single episode is similar to these first two, it's gonna be such a ride to the end. So I'm super excited, but holy crap, this is crazy. I know. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.